Okay, this Christmas season's crazy. We have Violent Night and now Christmas Bloody Christmas, but is the latter worth seeing in the theater or on Shudder this weekend? Let's talk about it. What's up, Flick fans? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking the horror slasher Christmas Bloody Christmas. Let me know down below what is the best scary Christmas movie of all time. Let's get into it. So, it's Christmas Eve, and Tori just wants to get drunk and party. But when a robotic Santa Claus at a nearby toy store goes haywire and begins a rampant killing spree through her small town, she's forced into a battle for survival. I don't have access to a rating yet. I'm just going to assume it's going to have a pretty hard R rating for blood, violence, gore, sexual content, everything you want, I guess, in a movie like this. And this comes to us from director Joe Bagos. That sounds like Jeffrey Bezos. Uh, he directed Bliss, VFW, and you know what I'll say? VFW was actually a really self-aware good time. It has this very distinct style to it, as does most of his other movies. And that style is absolutely present in this film. His movies, they have this throwback feeling to them, like they should have come out in the 80s. They capture whatever genre they're going for so well from that time period. This has the classic slasher slash horror thriller vibes, but a sci-fi as well. I got some Terminator out of this movie, and I'll describe that here in just a second. But I want to start with the story and these characters. And Tori, well, she's interesting. Right, We start out with the characters of Tori and Robbie, and they're uh, kind of building their relationship. They work together, they know a lot about each other, but they decide to go out. She cancels a date to go out on the town with Robbie. I like their relationship. Their dynamic is fascinating because they're constantly uh, chirping and getting on each other's nerves, but you can tell there's a bit of, a, of an emotional spark there uh, between the two, and you understand that we're getting all of these conversations between them to make them more likable as characters, to build up their relationship, but also also to uh, kind of sustain this other storyline that is slowly ramping up behind the scenes of this mechanical Santa Claus who, uh, for some reason you'll learn in the movie, decides to start causing chaos at this other location. And it leads to our main two characters inevitably, obviously, that's what we're building up to. But there's a lot of dialogue in the first act of this movie, and it throws you back to some of these classic slasher movies that take time building up characters, allow us to kind of get to know them, maybe more than usual, to then put them in a situation of survival. Not only these two, but there are other characters at play here. Uh, and that buildup was unexpected, much appreciated, and I think fans, audiences, are going to fall on two different sides of this movie because of it. You're going to have those who just want to get to the slasher element of this movie. And while we're cutting back to this mechanical Santa Claus throughout, really throughout the second act, the first act is more so build up, it takes a while to get to the carnage. And when I say the carnage, I mean the satisfying, bloody, wild carnage that you hope to see in a movie called Christmas Bloody Christmas. So the payoff is there. But that buildup is going to throw a lot of people off because I don't know if they're going to expect these two characters taking up so much screen time and having some fun with each other in terms of dialogue. I mean, we get movie references galore. These are two people that we are going to be able to uh, relate to. They're talking about Blumhouse films, classic action movies, what their taste is. As someone who appreciates film and filmmaking, I'm going, oh, okay, well, that's at least an interesting conversation. I'm learning more about these characters. Uh, but it does get a bit lengthy, and I think the pacing may be a problem for some in the first act. It also does make it feel, in a way, like the movie doesn't entirely know where it's going until you get to the point to where it reveals where it's going, and then as an audience member, I was satisfied at that point. I said, okay, here's why we got the buildup, now let's see what the payoff entails. And even though the payoff is slightly predictable, you kind of know what's coming and how it's going to come. That's what she said! <laughs> But I like that our director here isn't trying to reinvent the genre. He's not trying to bring you something you've never seen before. It's more so a spin on that classic genre, incorporating a figure, a Christmas icon that people know and love. But the fact that it is Santa Claus doing all of this killing, that in itself is really fun. I mentioned Terminator a bit earlier. This is a mechanical Santa Claus. That means it's going to be a hard figure to stop. Terminator. It's like you couldn't stop him. He was on a rampage, and there was no way against that. Feels the same way with this Santa Claus, because no matter how many times he goes down, he gets back up consistently throughout the movie, no matter what you throw at him. So there is this sense of survival, but there's also this sense of peril that our characters, 
no matter what they do, they're not going to make it. And he's just going to keep coming back. So that was really cool to see. The director is in his playground. He has access to all of these really fun things. And he can't necessarily go outside of that playground, bring in new elements we haven't seen. Uh, but we're incorporating gore, violence, sex, drugs, all of the things that are typical to a slasher like this, except we're setting it in Christmas time. Uh, this huge mechanical Santa Claus is the slasher that's after our characters, but there is some interesting buildup and some dialogue there to allow us to like those characters. And then you throw in the cliche, you know, you had the cops, Officer Smith and Sheriff Monroe, played by Jeff Daniel Phillips, who is great as always. I liked learning more about his character. So, uh, you know, those cliches are there, but at the same time, you're having so much fun when the killing starts. It really does come down to, can you make it to that point without getting frustrated? And do you appreciate the character development that we're getting Riley Dandy, who plays Tori? She does a really great job in the film. A lot of these integral moments fall on her shoulders, and we're with her through most of it. So uh, the fact that she does so well makes me look at that performance. And not all of the performances are up to par some of the supporting actors weren't as good as maybe i wanted them to be but for the most part tori was great and she's on screen most of the time before i give you my score same spiel as always if you want to support this channel and drop a like that would be awesome and today's phrase of the day is i'm on the naughty list be sure to comment that down below and confuse people it may not be a Merry Christmas for some of Santa's victims, but audiences will get so much joy from seeing this iconic figure play the slasher role. The dialogue-filled build-up is a bit lengthy, but the payoff is a bloody good time. And I had a bloody good time with this one, going to 70%. Again, this is going to be in select theaters this weekend, but also on Shudder. So if you have Shudder, I think it's worth a watch, man. I, I had fun, and this isn't even a genre I'm normally, like, super excited for, but this one works so well, so... Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you soon.